This one common denominator that I see very often, every day, really needs addressing to enable everything else to happen. It's being able to square the club face. So that sounds pretty obvious really, and fairly easy to do. Everybody's got their own mechanism, their own way of squaring the face. But is your mechanism helping you or hindering you to sequence your body movement? We're looking right at the end of the upper chain here today. We want to enhance our self-awareness in terms of how we can move this club. What is our capability of moving this golf club? What potential do we have with it? Be careful where you do this. You could use cushions, make some kind of mini wall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna strike the ground with the toe. So I'm sure you've seen the toe deep divot exercises. This is just a variation of it. But you can do it indoors, you can do it on the driving range. You could be really inventive and use something like a basket, get a couple of baskets and you can create your own practice environment. What I suggest you do, I'm right-handed, holding this with my lead hand, left hand, and I'm just gonna take a coin and tap the toe. Because that gives you a real sensation of the part of the club head that you're gonna be using. Not just looking and kind of imagining it and then trying to somehow, yeah, simulate it, actually feel it. Give your body the feedback it needs so you're touching the toe, right on the edge. So not the face, not the toe on the face, it's there right on the edge, right at the bottom. That's what we're gonna be hitting the ground with. So your body's got some enhanced sense of where it is. Take your normal grip, have a little waggle, get some range of motion with the wrist. Open the face, close it, make sure it's traveling up and down as well, then make a circle. So start to free up the movement. If you find that's really difficult to do with your grip, then maybe adjust your grip. Maybe your grip is limiting your available range of motion with your wrists. What we're gonna do now is swing back. I'm just gonna practice hitting the ground with the toe. Twisting the shaft, but not like this. Not allowing the club head to take over the hands, otherwise we're gonna hit this wall. Now, where you stand is gonna make it easier or harder. You might find for the early releases, which I am one of two, so us early releases, we're probably gonna cheat without even realizing it and we're gonna stand here. And intuitively kind of make it easier for ourselves. Hi guys, I'm really excited to announce that we're gonna be running some two day GRF golf schools with our GRF Tour Pro experience. And that's with Mark Foster and David Griffiths. We're already running these in Turkey and we've run them in Dubai, but we're bringing it to the UK and it's a condensed two day version where you get 11 hours of coaching, we cover full swing, in depth GRF, using the GRF training system, the vector map, everything you see on the videos, plus short game and then we finish it off on the golf course. You'll get to play with both Foz and Griff, them helping you manage your game and transition what we've been learning in our sessions on the golf course. It's two days, it's on the 13th and 14th of May. It's at West Hearts Golf Club. All the details are down in the comments, so check them out, guys. Let us know if you wanna join us. One place has gone already. There's only six places available, so please be quick and join us at West Hearts. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna to move to the left. So now this is kind of a normal wall position for a seven iron. And we're going to strike the ground behind the barrier with the toe. But what we're going to make sure we're doing is not allowing the head to strike the, the wall. So we've got to keep the head away from the wall. Even if you feel like it has to bounce backwards. Ideally, let it travel up. And notice where the handle is. The handle would smash through the wall. So as this head bounces off the ground and travels up in a closed form, because it's moving, it's fluid, this handle travels forward and up too. So that club face is starting to point down, the shaft's rotated, this would have smashed through the wall if we extend the wall upwards and the club head's way behind. And if you've got control over your levers, not in a tensioned way, fluid, you could stand here and do it. And it's never in danger of striking the wall. If you're using the early release to square the face and it's subconscious, 
you won't even realise. You'll hit it and think, oh my god, I didn't expect to do it. That's going to happen. For me, this is a real essential element of developing your golf swing. Making sure we can get the club, the toe of the club, striking the ground, and allow the club to travel and bounce upwards. Now, of course, we're not going to hit the ball like this, okay? And why are we letting the club travel up? Why are we letting it go vertical and not forward? Well, it's purely an exercise. This is not going to look like this in a golf swing. These are components of a full golf swing. We're just defragmenting it and allowing ourselves just to recognise what this club can do. By allowing that club to travel up and the handle to travel up and forward, we're really tuning ourselves to the rotation of the shaft, which is that rotation about the shaft is that opening and closing the face, and that then isn't dependent on our pivot with the wrist. We can close and open this face and this part of the club can travel anywhere. So we're in control. Once we have to use this excessively, we are going to be using some of this, of course. But most of us are overusing this and not really feeling much of this. So allowing the club to travel up, bouncing it so the club head travels vertical. The handle can continue to travel up and work forward through the wall. What this is going to let you do it's going to use your body without compromising the body movement because as soon as this fires, what does the body do? It stops. As soon as you start to fire the levers early, the body starts to brace, it has to stabilise to allow the levers to go. And they've gone a little bit early, so the body now has been compromised, the body movement has been compromised. We don't realise it, we might be working on turning our hips or pushing off the ground, dropping and popping or whatever it, whatever it is we're focusing on. But this will always limit the ability to actually make the changes you, you, you intend and desire. This has to be the last thing in the sequence. If we want to sequence the body more optimally, then this has got to travel behind. We can't allow this to take over too early or we lose the body sequence. So this exercise, bouncing it off the ground, rotating the face. You can hear the sound, it's bouncing and notice the arms are soft and the club is bouncing vertically. We have got to master our level of control of the club whilst actioning it fluidly. So we're in control of these fluid dynamics in terms of joint sequencing and sensing it at the end of the chain where all the nerve endings are, our interaction with the club, we can feel the handle. This is what is actioning our movement of the club. We've got to feel it with the hands. We've got to recognise how we can use the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, everything starts to free up. Even shrugging and then rolling the shoulders, making big circles, up and back. You can start to mobilise the scapulae. You can start to free up the elbows, the wrists, and let this chain become more reactive to our intention. And our intention here is to rotate that club head into the ground and bounce it off the floor vertically. And the handle still forward. Once you can do this, you've now got a closing face in a lagged form. Now, you might think, well, that's just gonna hit Paul. When I go to the golf ball, that's just gonna hit low Paul hooks. And you'd be absolutely right. But once you start to combine this with your body rotation, start to balance out these planes of motion. These forces start to balance out because the pivot helps to stabilize these forces. And for the guys who fade and slice, it's gonna be quite a revelation when you start to really rotate that face and compress that golf ball because it's, it's, it's not hooking or drawing like this, where you're just letting it flip past the hands, adding loft, compromising your stride, brushing the grass very shallow, it's the complete opposite. You're actually gonna be increasing your angle of attack down with a rotated face to your path. You're about to play draws with more ease. When we take this away, now it's on a swing. 
and allow your body to just move as per normal. Just feeling the toe strike into the ground. And what I suggest you do is play a few shots. There it is, full draw. That's what we'd expect. If it's a bit heavy, I'm probably hanging back a little bit. I'm probably maybe releasing this a little bit early. So I've got to ensure that the full end of the golf club here leads. This should be well in front of the golf ball in our mind before we even sense the strike because this club is going to be travelling forward and down and then it's going to rapidly rise and as it goes up that's when the club releases and below this point is your low point so the exercise we've got here helps delay this this can continue to travel uncompromised by the squaring up of the face so if you find it a bit heavy let the handle travel for, for longer You'll start to sense this space left or forward, left for the right handers, forward of the ball with the handle. And it's this we need to explore now. 